Uh, hey gangs, Maria here from GoalieTrainingPro.com and I am on the Zoom with my friend Lisa Spree, who is a registered dietitian. We've done videos for like years back um, and she's a co-owner of NutriProCan, which is NutriProCan.ca, right? Yes. Yeah. Yay. Um, so I asked Lisa because I like probably a lot of you are in the same boat. It's it's like when we're when we're co when I'm COVID Maria staying home all the time. I I my nutritional habits need to be different than when I'm like goalie Maria going going to the stick and pock and going to the rink and sort of burning up all these calories and and I think too as we sort of shift out of this. Um, you know, okay, how, how can we sort of meet our nutritional needs and, and get back on track, basically? Because also a lot of us, I don't know if you did this, Lisa, but <laughs> like, I would just either like be like, well, but there's COVID, so I should have a beer on a Wednesday night because I'm stuck at home all the time. And it's like, or like, I should buy the, the one bite brownies. It's like, what? why would I buy one bite brownies? Or like, like, I don't drink alcohol during the week. It's like, why would I drink alcohol during the week? because I have to stay home every day like that is the new norm yeah mm -hmm. so weird so weird so we're gonna try to sort of dial in nutrition and I also wanted to really tie in um because I've been getting tons of questions about um like there's always I'll say fads you know out there so we're gonna touch on a couple the two I think I'd for sure like to touch on are like the whole intermittent fasting thing um you know, and, and how that fits in with an athlete's life. And then maybe we'll chat about veganism as well. Cause I think the movie game changer, maybe, um, um, I don't know, maybe didn't quite paint a complete picture. So we'll just, we'll get into it, but let's start with intermittent fasting. And can you kind of help us, uh, you know, figure it out? Cause this is your area of expertise. Yeah, I love talking about both of these these trends because both of them are kind of like old diets that are back again. Um, and in terms of intermittent fasting, um, and, and also the cool thing too with both intermittent fasting and like plant-based eating is there's actually quite a bit of research behind them. So, so it's actually, I can speak to it, where some of the diet trends that are out there, I'm like, there's zero research. But with these ones, there are. So intermittent fasting, um, there's a lot of reported benefits to it. But again, I want to stick to mostly like sports performance and kind of what's going on right now. Um, the biggest thing that I see with intermittent fasting is it's kind of like a lack of definition or knowing what it is. Or people saying that they're doing intermittent fasting, but they're doing something a little bit more that's like time-restricted eating. So I like to separate the two things. Um, there's intermittent fasting and intermittent means that it's not a regular thing. So intermittent would be something like doing anywhere from like a 16 up to 48 hour fast and not doing that every day. So that would be more like people who are doing maybe like an every other day fast or um, something like you know, a day a week or 36 hours a week. And what does fasting actually mean? Um, there is no true definition. And there's, there's really fasting is not giving your body energy. So food energy. Um, there is really no research to support doing a fast where you don't have anything. So when we're talking about fasting, I want to make sure that people understand when I'm saying fasting, I am never saying like skip water. Um, that is like, that is always going to be a human need. If you're going to try fasting, you still need to hydrate. That's okay to do. Now, if you're doing like a fasting for like a medical procedure, listen to whatever they tell you, but that's not what we're talking about. Um, so that, so that would be more intermittent fasting where what I see most people kind of moving towards and what there's really good research to support is more something like a time restricted eating habit. So that is where it's like, this is where you hear the like 12 and 12 or 14 and 10 
or um, some variation of that where you kind of pick an eating window for the day and you say, okay, I start eating at this time, I stop eating at this time, I don't eat for the rest of that period of time. And that's usually something that people would do on like a daily basis or most days of the week. And in terms of the, the benefits, some of them, so intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating do have some benefits in common. Um, but it really, what, what people, when, I, when people come to me and they're like, should I be fasting? Should I do intermittent fasting? Should I be picking eating windows? I'm like, what is your goal? So that's the most important thing. And that's for any athlete who's coming in for nutrition for any reason. It's like, okay, what is your specific goal? Like, are you looking to put on lean mass? Are you looking to lose fat mass? Are you looking to get faster? Are you looking to improve longevity? Like, what is your actual goal? And then once I understand what your goal is, then I can talk to you a little bit more about what you should be doing and and how and whether it's gonna be beneficial. So um, do you mind if I dive into some potential benefits? No, that'd be great, yeah, no, I'd really like that. I'll go over the benefits and some potential risks and then kind of like how we can do some of these things. So potential benefits of um, time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting, the main benefit is it usually leads to a lower caloric intake. So typically when people have these, these restrictions of time to eat, they typically eat less calories. And that's where we see the biggest benefit. With that, what that usually results in is lower body fat levels, which we know have a lot of benefits in terms of our health as well as in sports performance. Um, so that's kind of the, the first thing that, that comes out of it is that, um, that lower caloric intake. We seem to not make up for, um, for those calories that we would have missed. Now, if you are the type of person that if you skip breakfast, you are famished all day and like overeating the rest of the day, then I'm like, okay, well, no, that's, this is not for you then. Um, it, you're not going to see the benefits. Um, if you're the type of person that you skip breakfast and you don't get super hungry and your energy levels are superb and you can kill your workout still, then I'm like, okay, well, maybe, maybe that's a potential benefit for you. So lower caloric intake overall with both intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating, that's probably the biggest benefit from, that we see from both of those. However, there has been some research, mostly in animal models, that look at isocaloric intake. So basically, you eat the same amount of calories. Mm -hmm. And that, so if we look at like a week and do that as having a couple fasts in there versus just eating whenever. And there are actually some potential benefits to, now this is more the intermittent fasting where we're going prolonged periods of time, so over 16 hours without eating. Um, there might be some longevity and cellular turnover level, uh, uh, benefits to doing some of that longer fasting. So again, this is more the intermittent fasting where it's not necessarily every, every day, but something that's probably 16 hours or more, um, still having water. And it seems that it does help our bodies in terms of um, turning on some of the mechanisms that help us in um, fighting pro-oxidants, in terms of getting rid of older dead cells within our body and making some new cells. In terms of athletic performance, I mean, that's going to potentially help your health and anything that helps your health could potentially help athletic performance. Um, but if I'm going to kind of dive into the risks there as well, think of going and having a training session after not eating for 36 hours. Probably not going to go so well. Yeah. So that's part of what we need to, to, to balance out when we're talking about athletes. So yeah, two kind of biggest benefits, overall lower caloric intake. Now that's not for everybody because some people tend to overeat when they haven't eaten. Um, and then that, that sort of um, benefit of, of increased cellular kind of like rejuvenation mm -hmm. from the extended, extended fast. Um, the third one that I'll kind of throw in there that applies to some athletes are digestive benefits. So I do work with a lot of athletes that have some GI issues going on. 
and um, there is some benefit to doing both the intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating in terms of helping digestion. Hmm. So, but that would be specific if digestion is an issue for you. Yeah. I would start with that if that is, that I would start looking maybe more at the time-restricted eating and saying like, okay, I'm going to eat after 6 p.m. and I'm going to give myself, you know, at least a 14-hour break and maybe don't start until you know, 8 a.m. or 10 a.m. or something mm -hmm. like that. And sometimes um, people do see some benefits to that. Um, now, in terms of the risks, um, there's a lot of risks. I, again, I'm not going to speak to you. So keep in mind, for both of these, you are still having water. So if you're not eating, you are still having water. There is no, do not do the no water for two days. Yeah. <laughs> That is not, and I like, you're like, yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And that is not beer. Um, no. <laughs> okay. It's a weekday. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, even though it's a day after Canada Day, it's still weekday. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the risks specific to athletes, um, you got to keep in mind you, you still have to train every day, right? So, are you having maybe you're eating less calories, but maybe you're having really, really not so good workouts and you're burning less and not getting all of the benefits out of your training session. Mm -hmm. And then also if you are fasting and you're training and then you're not eating for a little while afterwards, you're not giving your body the building blocks that it needs to make benefit from that training. And then it's like, okay, so maybe you're cutting back on calories. You're, you might be losing some body fat that way, but you're not getting lean mass. You're not getting the most out of your training sessions. And then it's like, hey, well, that's not, that's not a good thing to do. So lower caloric intake is not always a good thing, especially with high training levels. Um, if you are a youth athlete where you're both growing and training, I'm like, this is a no go. Like, don't even you. There's no way that you're going to meet your nutritional needs doing fasting. You need to eat all the time. Um, other risks. Um, those are who are at risk for disordered eating because it is that restriction. Mm. If you are prone towards towards that, or you have a history of that, I'm. It's a no go whether it's time restricted eating or intermittent fasting, it's a no go. We, we cannot have any strict rules like that. So, um, make sure like just do some self-awareness. If that's something you're at, you're at risk for, do not do it. Um, the other things potentially that could go along with it are our um, nutrient deficiencies. And, and that's just basically, if you're not eating enough, it's, yeah, calories that you're not getting in, but it's also the micronutrients. And athletes who have higher um, energy needs have higher micronutrient needs as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a risk there. Um, and then if you're doing extended fast for too long, too, um, hormonal disruptions. So part of our like even circadian rhythm, but for females, like our hormones are based upon our eating as well. Um, and so we can sometimes see hormonal disruption there as well as the stress hormone cortisol. So fasting does cause an increase in cortisol release um, for multiple reasons. And if you are under a lot of stress already and have issues with cortisol or cortisol dysregulation, well, that's gonna, that's not gonna be good. So those are some of the, the kind of risks. Yeah, um, I think I remember seeing John Berardi speak on this probably, um, you know, I don't know, six, six, seven years ago, and it was, you know, so it was like it was sort of new. <laughs> new again and so he you know he would had and, it, and you know a lot of it he's like yeah it's sort of what what yeah what are your goals and what suits your lifestyle but then he he kind of as an aside um was like and just like I'm not really sure but like um because I think all their coaches were sort of doing it and doing a little like self-experimentation he's like but one of our female coaches was on it and like things were going great and everything and then like it almost seemed like maybe she was going into early menopause or there was something really weird there and so then actually I was doing intermittent fasting and again this is probably maybe I had started like I don't know five or six years ago and so I was yeah I was doing eight hours of eating 16 hours not and once I got used to it, it actually felt it felt fine um, and a lot of it was just yeah so that like 
yeah, I could just get up and go <laughs> to work, you know, and, and, um, but then maybe, I don't know how long it was, maybe three or four summers ago, I was having like, uh, like bad, like heart palpitations and my arms were tingling and I'd like feel like, like probably like four times a day, feel like I was going to pass out. And, um, so, um, so I did go to the doctor, uh, because my dad had, uh, my dad died of like, um, like an unshockable arrhythmia, like it, he was 76, but he just like kind of dropped dead. So I was a little sensitive to things like, <laughs> like, should I feel like I'm going to pass out? And, um, so, you know, I went to the, to the doctor where I got the standard sort of medical treatment, like, you know, well, it's just stress, you know, it's probably just stress. And I didn't feel that stressed out. It was in the summer and, and it's all, it's a very busy time. So I'm sure it is more stressful, but I kind of remembered to like what John had said and just, I just thought, you know what, I just want to like, I want this to stop. And so, um, yeah, I just started eating regularly again. And over time it did sort of settle down and it's been pretty stable ever since. But um, yeah, like I, and so what you're saying, like, and I didn't know, cause no medical doctors know this stuff. Like they, the, yeah, like at the end of the day, the doctor who wasn't my normal doctor, but, uh, he was the guy I had, I was seeing, he was, he was just like, well, hope you feel better. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Offered me anti-anxiety medication, which is like, but I, I don't feel anxious. Like, I don't know that I need to take an, an like, and you know, and, and then it was just like, okay, well, just feel better. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, now ask that you questions and ask like, what's your lifestyle right now? Has anything changed? Yeah. That would have been, mm -hmm. Well, and like, I even did a Holter monitor for like however many days. And it's like, well, when you think you're having an episode, like you, you push a button or whatever, I can't remember how you do it. And uh, so then I went back to get the results. And he's like, well, when you marked events, he's like, just your heart rate went up. And I was like, I know, but like, so I'd be in bed, like going to sleep and it, and I'd feel it or like, I wasn't doing like, you know, anything. He'd be like, well, feel better. But, but so now, you know, now that you talk about that, that like it could, you know, elevate cortisol and then, and then if you are, you know, in stress that maybe for you is normal stress, but with that added on it, it can compound the effects. So, um, and those are more sensitive to that. Um, our bodies have to be very sensitive to ups and downs in caloric intake because we basically have to switch off our fertility as there, it seems like there's going to be a, as some sort of foods that's not available yeah um, so we're right away you're like nope we gotta shut those down those hormones yeah. we're, we're a little bit more resilient in terms of that just from like an evolutionary standpoint yeah yeah and that's basically if you like listen to your body like if you so so kind of like my my go-to is like okay so if this is something you're curious about let's start with some time restricted eating so let's start with like, if you're currently kind of at like a 12 and 12, so you're eating between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. I'm like, okay, well, let's go maybe to like a 14 and 10. So cut, cut off an hour before, an hour after, or two hours from somewhere. See how you feel. Okay, you feel good there. Well, we can go a little bit further. And then, you know, if you're feeling really good, then maybe we can say, okay, so maybe once a week, you want to try a 24-hour one listen to your body so don't go by like this is the fasting protocol that i have to do sure like and we all need to have goals and guidelines go with it and the uh, precision nutrition has a great one mm. kind of like guideline and uh variety's um reflection in there when he tried it is hilarious so it is something good to 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 read but go by how your body feels yeah and um Something else that I kind of talk to you athletes about too is like, okay, so if you do have a recovery week coming up, well, maybe that's a time that you can start experimenting with it. Like if you're in the middle of season, probably no. Mm -hmm. um, if you're, you know, in a hard training block, mm, maybe not great. But if you do have, you know, the end of season coming up, you got a couple of months of recovery, maybe experiment with it there. And then there's something else that kind of fits into, it's kind of an in-between between intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating called the fasting mimicking diet. And what it is, is like five days of lower calories, um, 750 calories per day. Part of the benefit, not so much for athletes, but for other people, fasting is lowered insulin levels. 
and it gives you that same kind of lowered insulin levels, lower caloric intake, but you're still able to eat a bit, so not pure fasting. And there is, uh, Walter uh, Luongo is a researcher that's done some research in that area. And it's not something you need to do, so it's not five days a week. It would be like you could do it maybe once a month or maybe like quarterly. So maybe that's something if you can say like, okay, so every three months I have a bit of a detraining week. Well, maybe you could pick like a couple of days that you're going to try doing something like that, but listen to your body. And if it's not working for you, don't do it. You don't have to do it. Yeah. 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 If it's right for your body, you're going to feel good doing it. You're not. Yeah. No, that's cool. Um, okay. That was awesome, Lisa. That was fantastic. Um, you did so well on that that I'm going <laughs> to give you a harder one. <laughs> um, so yeah, I do want to talk about uh, veganism because, um, you know, it is, it is a thing. And I, you know, like, and for, we were chatting about this earlier, but you know, for various reasons, like I, I feel like I should be vegan because, you know, I, I think that a lot of factory farming is hard on the environment. I also feel that, Hey, I wouldn't, I would never, I, I would never go out and kill a cow or a, like, you know, I used to fish when I was a kid. I wouldn't even fish now, you know, because I don't, I couldn't kill a living thing. So who am I to be eating it? You know? Um, but I've had a few athletes uh, and like in teenage athletes too, who uh, have seen the movie game changer, which is a very sexy movie. Um, and, uh, I think they maybe don't make clear enough how James Cameron, who is behind the movie actually owns, uh, I don't know if he owns majority stock, but is a, a stakeholder in, a, 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 a meatless meat product company. Um, and, but you know, so they're, they're wanting to go vegan for the performance benefits of being a vegan. And, and, um, you know, I don't think that my personal opinion is if you want to be vegan, that's yeah. Like that's, that's great. If that's what you decide for whatever your reason is, but I'm not really sure that there's performance benefits. I think if you do it right, you can, you can maintain your performance. And, and, uh, I guess it depends what your nutrition was like before, you know, if you just ate garbage junk food, then yeah, like probably any change is going to be better. Um, but I don't know of like actual, supporting performance benefits. Okay, so I'm gonna start off on a nice note and then I'm gonna like just, well, I'll get, to, okay. So first of all, when people come in and talk to me about like, I wanna go plant-based, I wanna go vegan, my my number one response is like, I, I am very like, I'm kind of Switzerland when it comes to diets and diet dogmas. I'm like, that's <laughs> great, wonderful. That's um, true, yeah. Not, not so much my approach to, to COVID. I think I'm doing, anyways, that's an aside. Um, but like my first thing is always like, why? Why, like is, is, is this is, is an ethical animal treatment thing? Is it an environmental thing? Is it a performance thing? Why? And then once I understand why and that athlete's goals, then I can speak to them about, you know, maybe what they should do. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I'm gonna dive right into is one of the experiments that, that they did in that movie a measure measuring erections um let's just go straight yeah. into that one yeah. I every like, teenage boy is like it's for the performance benefits i'm looking for yeah. <laughs> what type of performance are we talking about yeah yeah i don't i don't ask those questions i don't ask questions if i don't want to know the answer <laughs> yeah that's true well, i need to learn that lesson um so <laughs> So, you know what, so if we think back to that experiment, so they had these um, uh, like tortillas and on when they had all different veggies and black beans, I remember it was on there and there was like some spinach and the other one was just like pure meat and cheese. And what they are, and this is the biggest thing with plant-based versus vegan, what they are neglecting to tell you is that the benefits that you that that athlete was getting, um, who was eating the the plant based or vegan version, was not because of the exclusion of the red meat. It was because of the inclusion of nitric oxide precursors, vegetables. 
Um, so yeah, so most of the benefit right. is the high intake of vegetables. That's really like, that is the key. And this is like, this is why I'm like, this is an old diet new again. Like this is something I've been telling people forever. Yeah. And this is research has support forever that people need to eat more vegetables. So and if, they put, if they just put vegetables on that meat taco, they would add exactly the same results. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. But that was some part of the experiment. They didn't do that, right? That's your only choice. You either eat meat or you eat all vegetables where it's like, can we just find a nice little place in the middle? Um, Switzerland. No. Yeah. Um, <sighs> So, um, I like to me that it was, they, they presented some interesting concepts in that movie, but when I watched that experiment that they did, like that was just like, I think I threw my laptop. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, no, I can't, I just can't listen to this anymore. So when people come in and they're talking about plant-based and like, yes, there are so many benefits to plant-based eating. But plant-based eating and veganism are two very different things. So plant-based eating is including large amounts of plant products. It's, in, it's having mostly unprocessed foods. And it's eating in a sustainable manner that is, is sustainable for you as a person, as well as sustainable for the environment. Um, those are the, fa the foundations where all the vegan diet really means is the exclusion of all animal products. You can still have a super highly processed, basically unhealthy vegan diet by just cutting out any animal products. So that would be like going to McDonald's and getting the Big Mac without the, the burger, um, the, without the patty. Or the, or the Beyond Meat. You yeah, know. Beyond Meat and yeah. getting your fries, <laughs> Coke and your ketchup. That's vegan. Right? So I like to differentiate between strictly vegan and plant-based eating because I think there is a lot of really, really good support for eating more plants. I think that's wonderful and eating less meat, but it doesn't necessarily mean the exclusion of all meat. And it's something like if you look at the Mediterranean diet, if you look at the traditional Asian diet, which we know have tons of benefits, that if we look at the blue zones, they all eat a plant-based diet. It's not that they don't eat any animal products, it's just mostly plant-based. For athletes, the biggest part of that is getting in your veggies, getting those nitric oxide precursors. So when t people are taking like beta alanine and all of these other supplements, you're getting more nitric oxide. That's the benefit of eating like beets and spinach and even black beans has like eat more of those things and you'll get those benefits. Now, when it comes to, to have meat, to not have the meat, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. So animal products are complete proteins. It doesn't mean that you can't get enough protein from, from plant-based products, but it can be a little bit tough to both get enough as well as get the balance. So if you are okay, including some animal protein in there, whether it's fish or eggs or dairy, whatever it is, it makes things a little bit easier. It doesn't mean that you have to, but if you're not so great at meal planning and cooking and having access to all of these plant-based proteins, then having a little bit of animal products can help to overcome that. And so what that could look like is like doing a burrito that you have like a whole wheat wrap, you got your spinach, you do some black beans and maybe a little bit of ground turkey or putting some like scrambled eggs in with scrambled tofu into that burrito. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that one or the other. It's like just include a little bit of the animal protein in there. You're going to get enough protein. You're going to get all the amino acids that you need. But you know what? If you wanted to do a full vegan, I'm like, that's great. Just make sure that you're just not cutting out animal products, that you're, that you're addressing plant-based proteins. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my, my biggest issue that I see with like plant-based versus vegan. And then in terms of like an ethical thing, like, yeah, I think conventionally raised animals, it's not awesome. Um, in Canada, it's, our farms are definitely better than what they are in the States. 
but you know, if that's, if that's an issue for you, I am all over, like go to a farm, talk to the farmer, see how they treat the animals. And this is really quite odd, but growing up, we actually would know the cow, we would get a half a cow and that would last us a long time. There's a lot of us, but it would last us a long time. We would actually know the cow. Yeah. And there's something about that connection where I understand that this cow is a living, breathing being. And it's, it's sort of role in life, part of its role in life is to nourish. Yeah. And while it's sad, and I got to say like, I don't know the last time I ate red meat, mm-hmm. it's not, and for multiple reasons, not my thing. Yeah. Um, there was something very kind of like meaningful to knowing that like, this is all part of the big brown world and that cow is being treated properly and it has a purpose in life and that Mm -hmm. purpose for the cow is to to help nourish Mm -hmm. so i i'm not a huge fan of conventional meat i do think you should go for the the naturally grown you shouldn't know the farmer and for the most part most of us should be eating less meat Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't mean that you need to cut it all out altogether. Yeah. I think it's getting easier and easier to get like, you know, yeah, locally raised, you know, meat. And, and so, yeah, it's, uh, no, that's, that's good. That's, uh, that's awesome. Let's, uh, let's be wrapping this up in like maybe five minutes or so. So I'm going to hit you with a couple rapid fire questions. Um, <clears throat> Cause Athlete, you know, like you work with athletes all the time. And Lisa, Lisa consults with some of the turning pro goalies as well. So if there's any of you who, too, who are like, I actually really need help with my nutrition, you can let me know and I'll put you in contact with um, Lisa or, she'll, or she can tell us the best way to get a hold, hold. What's the best way for people to reach out to you, Lisa? Yeah, you can find us so, like at NutriBocan on just about everything or even give people my email, whatever. Anyway. Okay. okay. So, but you know, athletes and they like, they love to have their shaker bottle, you know, like they love a supplement, like, like, even if you're like, well, yeah, you could have that, or you could just have like a bagel with peanut butter on it or, you know, but they love to have their thing. Um, so if, if you can answer this, if there were like two relatively innocuous, but supplements that probably, you know, not a bad idea for, and I'm thinking maybe more like teenage athletes who are using a lot of calories, you know, what would, that they would get at their local sport nutrition store? What, what would you suggest? Um, creatine, especially for those who are looking at going plant-based or vegan. Um, it's something that needs to be taken every day. And I know every time I see, I say creatine, I get some cringes. It's got a bad rap. If you look at all of the research, it is, as long as you're getting a good source, it mm-hmm. is the most safe. And it is the first sports performance. It's the most supported. You need to take it every day. You don't have to take a ton. It's somewhere between probably three to 10 grams per day, depending on your body size. Yeah. That would be my number one first go-to, especially for those who are vegan. Um, and then the next one, and you probably heard this from me before, beets. Make your own either beetroot powder, dehydrate it, add it to water, pick some up, or make your own like beet juice. Nitric oxide precursor um, has a bit of iron in there as well. Spectacular to do if you want to make like a sports beverage where you put in like a little bit of salt as well, especially with this hot weather that we finally have. Um, It's got a bit of carbs in there too, which is going to power you through your workouts. Uh, Those would be my two that I would say. I was just, I'm reading a book, uh, which actually leads into my next question. Um, so I'm reading a book called How Not to Die by Michael Greger. And so I just how actually- How not to get COVID. Pardon? Yeah, how, how not to get COVID. That's a new email that you just put out. But anyway, sorry, no, it's a great, but, how not to die, yeah. Yeah, and um, so it's it's a great, well, I'm listening to it on Audible, but it's a great read. But um, I just finished the part where he was talking about yeah, nitrous oxide from beet beet juice, uh, and like even the performance enhancement, like it, like like so, distance athletes are running faster times using less oxygen, like and and 
research proven, not just anecdotal. Like I felt great, but it's like, and you know, it's like we didn't think that you could do that really. But it's uh, he was talking about. So you know, even like yeah, I think he said you know an hour before like a competition, if you have like so much cooked spinach or beet juice, that it it does definitely have that performance enhancing effect. So it's both chronic and acute. So by, by um, having it over time, so even just like eating more beets, you'll get that chronic effect. And then, yeah, about 60 minutes before performance, there's that acute effect yeah. as well. That's crazy. No, that's perfect. That's um, cool. like, yummy. Yeah. So then other than beets, now I'm thinking of just like actual foods, like actual like superfoods. If there was sort of one to two foods you would want athletes to add to their to their you know, regular eating cycle, what would you pick? Um, greens. I don't care what they are. And you actually get benefits from different. So spinach has more iron, kale has more calcium, greens. Everybody should be getting in at least one to two cups of greens every single day and rotate through. Find what you like. I don't care. Put in a smoothie, saute it, put in a soup. I, do, I don't care. And I'm not talking about the greens powder. Like actually you need to eat greens. Um, that would be definitely number one vegetable. Oh, and then I got to pick through all of the other ones. I guess I have to go for something orange, um, especially the game immune system right now. So I would say probably either carrots or sweet potato for athletes would be really, really good to get in. Um, roast them with a little bit of olive oil or avocado oil or some sort of oil, and that helps in the beta carotene absorption. Um, those would be the two that I would say. And like oven roasted sweet potato, just yeah, with a little bit of olive oil rubbed on it, a bit of salt and pepper. It's like, it tastes like candy. Like it's like, how does this transform into so much deliciousness? Like, or I wrap them in foil and put them on the barbecue and like, you can't mm -hmm. overcook them basically. And then, you know, it's like, how is this so good? So yeah, that, I loved how geeky you were. You're like, oh, I can only choose one more vegetable. Like, yeah. it's just like, Oh gosh, it's like asking you to pick out your favorite dolly. Well, I love them all. I oh, absolutely. And dollies you can take with vegetables, those are near and dear to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a few athletes now who, um, uh, for like sweet potatoes are their go to for pre performance. So, like, they'll cook up, like, I don't know, I don't even know how many for the week, and like about an hour to two hours before um, training, as well as before events, like that is their go-to. Just like pop a couple sweet potatoes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so good. Okay, here's the last question. So I mentioned I was uh, reading How Not to Die by Michael Greger, which is a, which is a really, yeah, really good book, uh, or I'm enjoying it anyway. Um, what do you have any, if people wanted to just like, like I just, yeah, I just want to know what I should eat. Um, do you have any resources that you like? Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Greger is great. He is, so he is complete vegan. Um, I really like on his website that, that he does do um, review of literature. Now it's still one-sided, so, so like he's great. Take that into account. Um, Dr. Hyman, he has the Doctor's Pharmacy is a good podcast. Okay. I'm, I'm pretty big and I've, I've been a fan of his for, for a while. Um, and he's more like the plant-based paleo-ish. I want to try to, to kind of say that. Yeah. Um, and he does a pretty good review of the literature as well. Um, those are probably like when I'm, I'm thinking through like my emails that I get like, and the spam that I haven't deleted, those are ones that I, those are probably my two go-tos. Um, what's the Michael Pollan's little book that's like, eat oh, food, okay. not too much, the little teeny one, mo eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Is those it, are the three thing? most, like if you don't know where to start, those yeah. are the three most important parts. So again, eat food, eat real food. Don't buy things that come in packages mostly plants so not saying only plants just mostly plants and not too much listen to your hunger levels you don't need to overeat although covid tells you otherwise 
You don't need to listen to your hunger levels. Yeah, Michael Pollan, and he has um, he has some great. Um, he's on some podcasts. I think he has a Netflix. He's on a Netflix thing as well. Huge yeah. fan of him. Yeah, he is. It, it might be like Food Inc. or something. But yeah, and he's and one of his books is like just small. Like it's just and it's like the the chapters are like a page, and it, it's just um, oh food food rules. I might be food rules. Uh, I might have it wrong, but. Um, yeah, his, his is, is amazing. Like the, just those, um, like three, and he's not, he's not a doctor or something like that. He's, he's a writer. Um, I totally, um, yeah, I think his newest his. book is about like psychedelics or something. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, go easy on that children. Don't read that one children, but read the, um, might be food, food, food rules. Food yeah. I know one, um, he has a couple, but food, uh, and, and in, in defense of food. That's yeah, the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, that's fantastic, Lisa. I got a jet. I got to jump on some coaching calls, but so great to catch up with you, and thank you. I'm glad you, you were doing well through the, through the lockdown, your first day back in the office, so I'm glad we had a chance to do a little work, and thank you so much for sharing your uh, wisdom and your advice with with uh, every all our goalies and, and hockey players. And so I really appreciate it. This is awesome, Maria. Thanks for always including me and, and caring about nutrition. Oh, like yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the fuel for the engine. So uh, I'll catch you later, Lisa. You have a fantastic day. Bye. Bye-bye.